Hello everyone, welcome to chapter six and seven, drawing and painting. Now we'll be talking a little bit about the drawing process and the different techniques of drawing. Then we'll talk about the different mediums that you may use with drawing and we'll do the same with painting, the techniques of painting and the different mediums in which people paint. So let's first talk about drawing. So drawing is an immediate and accessible way to communicate through imagery. Um, anybody can draw. If you have a pen, you could draw. You could draw a stick figure and that is still drawing. So the desire to draw is so natural to us. If you really think about it, before we could even read or write, we knew how to draw as children. We're not very good at it, but nevertheless, we draw. So just like any kind of skills, drawing takes practice. And a lot of the artists carry sketchbooks or drawing books with them so that they can practice anytime they need to. So just an example of showing you progress is these um, drawings side by side by Vincent van Gogh. So if you can see the drawing on the left is not as good as the one on the right. The one on the left is a little bit awkward. Um, the proportion is a little bit wrong. The head and the hands are just slightly too big. Um, but if you notice the dates, after two years of practice, Vincent van Gogh got really good at drawing. With his drawing on the right, the old man with his hand, uh, head in his hands, it is a very good compose um, and very captivating drawing um, that is very different from where he started. So the purpose of drawing, there are three main purpose um, of drawing. It is included, but not limited to these three points, but you can use drawing as a notation, a sketch or a record of something seen, remember, or imagined, or you could use it as a study or preparation for another, usually larger and more complex work. So, uh, or as an end in itself, a complete work of art. So what we had just saw with Van Gogh's um, drawings, I would say that they're probably more as a notation, a sketch or a record of something that he saw. Um, but this sketch right here by Michelangelo, the study of a reclining male nude, it is probably a study or preparation for another usually larger or more complex work. Um, as you can see, he's trying to study the anatomy of a human body. And if you notice on the bottom left hand corner and on the right hand side, he draws the hands over and over again um, because I'm sure he's trying to perfect the technique of drawing hands. So it is a study and a preparation for something probably bigger. Now let's talk about the technique of drawing. So artists often use rows of parallel, parallel lines to suggest shadows or volumes. And these parallel lines are called hatching. And so this is the image on the very far left. By doing hatching, you are creating shades or shadows or volumes. And there's an, uh, two other techniques to create different kinds of look. And there's cross hatching and there's contour hatching. So just to show you an example, you can see that this um, hatching drawing by Charles White called Preacher. Now from far away, you might not notice that um, these are just lines, but if you look very closely, all the shadows, all the shade, all the shadings, all the, the curvatures of his hands, of his face, they're actually just made by tiny little lines being hatched together. So with drawing, there are two types of media. We can talk, we're gonna talk about dry media and we're gonna talk about wet media or liquid media. So dry medias are charcoal, contact crayon, and pastel. Now this is an example of charcoal. This is actually a drawing by Umberto Boccioni. It's called State of Mind, The Farewell in 1911. And what this is, is um, drawn by charcoal. Now charcoal, the sticks of charcoal used today are very similar to those used by prehistoric people. You know, those cave drawings that you've seen. Um, and they're, they're really just charred wood sticks. So when you burn wood to a point where it's all black, then you can draw with it. So with charcoal, dark passage can be drawn very quickly. Now the next one that we're gonna talk about is Conte Crayon. So Conte Crayon is made from graphite that is mixed with clay and pressed into sticks. And it can produce varied lines or broad strokes that resist smudging. 
way better than charcoal. Charcoal is very powdery, um, but Conta Crayon is not as powdery. And Conta Crayon has many colors. Charcoal is just black. So Conta Crayon has black on the left, as you can see in this particular drawing. And also there are red and white Conta Crayon that you can see on the drawing on the right. So the last medium we're going to touch today on the dry media is um, pastel. Now pastel is very interesting because pastel produced since the 17th century have characteristic very similar to natural chalk, but they have a very fresh and pure color because they're literally composed of mainly just pigment. They have very little binding materials that holds them together. So they're very brittle. They break very easily and they're also very powdery, but they're very creamy and their colors are very, very vibrant. And as you can see, you can't really draw very sharp lines with them. Um, they kind of give the painting or uh, the drawing a very glowy and dreamy look. So we're just going to touch very quickly on the liquid media. Um, you, you have mainly washes. And if you um, look at some of the Asian or Chinese paintings, you could see these techniques used. Now we will go into painting. So we're going to talk about the painting process and the ingredients that we use to paint. So there are three main ingredients in the medium that paint, painters will use. There's pigment, which provides color and usually in the form of a very fine powder. There is binder, which is a sticky substance that holds the pigment particles together and attaches the pigment to the surface of the canvas. And then there is the vehicle, which is a substance that makes the paint a liquid and it usually can be added to the paint to make it thinner. So we will go through the different types of painting. Now, first is watercolor. So watercolor is pigment mixed together with water, obviously, as a vehicle, and gum arabic, which is sap from acacia tree as a binder. Now, I'm sure you've all seen a watercolor painting before, but just in case you don't, you, you have not, here is a painting by John Singer Sargent called Rio de Santa Maria Formosa, Venice. Um, this is a very famous water painting by him, and he's actually a very famous water painter. So watercolor is really basically a staining technique. As you can see in this painting, the paint is really applied in a very thin and translucent, translucent washes that, that really allows the light to pass through the layers of color and to reflect back from the white paper. So um, white, um, you don't paint white in watercolor. You leave, um, <clears throat> you leave the white spaces as white and opaque colors are painted for emphasis. So the next type of painting is called fresco, which is pigment suspended in water, um, which are applied to a damp lime plaster surface. So what is interesting about this technique and this type of painting is that it's usually um, for outside our work or it is for murals that are outside the building. Because the way that it is done, basically the painters work very quickly painting on a still wet wall plaster wall and as the wall dries the lime in the wall um, in contact with air it, it, it forms a transparent calcium crystal that chemically binds the pigment to the wall so basically the painting is no longer just on top of the wall it really becomes one with the wall and it really gives a very smooth and very, very durable finish that is very hard to get rid of and it, it hardly fades. All right, the next one that we hear probably the most is oil, oil paintings. So oils are pigments mixed with various vegetable oils such as linseed oil, walnut oil, and puppy seed oil. So we already talked a little bit about the different techniques of oil painting. And one of the ones, just as a reminder that we talk about, um, our last uh, week's lesson are the technique of impasto. Anybody remember what that is? Impasto is where the artist layers the paint thickly onto a canvas. That is, it is shown here with um, Vincent van Gogh's Starry Night. 
So when they layer a very thick paint on the canvas, it creates texture on the canvas itself. Now lastly, we're going to talk about acrylic. Acrylic sometimes has the appearance of oil paint. It looks very similar to oil paint and has the consistency and um, the visual elements of oil paint. And sometimes it's kind of confusing and sometimes people could um, get it mixed up. Is it acrylic um, painting or is it an oil painting from far away? It's hard to tell. But the difference between oiled and uh, acrylic is that acrylics, you can mix it with water, whereas oil paint, you can only mix it with oil. And acrylic paints have pigment is, are held together by acrylic polymers. So there you go. Um, this is chapter six and seven, drawing and painting. Thank you guys very much. I will see you guys next time.